Joshua Pasha with us. Joshua, congratulations. You are still world champion. How's it feel? Thank you, brother. So, yeah, it's been uh, one year and eight months. been a long layoff, but it's amazing to be back here. And it's a very amazing feeling to get the win and finish. You just established yourself, established yourself as the dominant strawweight world champion. Who's next for you? Um, well, for me, I'm going back home, take a rest and train after two weeks. And what's next for me? I think uh, for one championship, will um, the rank number two, uh, Yoshio uh, Naito versus Bokang or Naito versus me for a trilogy again. That's what, that would be great. First one goes to South China Morning Post MMA. Um, I, I just wanted to ask, did you imagine it would finish that quickly? Uh, I think after the two wars you guys had before, I think I was expecting, you know, a long fight again, but uh, over in the first round. Um, you know, for me, every fight I expect to go five rounds or three rounds, you know, and I, I didn't expect that uh, very fast finish, you know, um, but I'm shocked that he is like kicking me or uh, he's striking with me. So uh, he's striking and, you know, this is my bread and butter. This is my world. So yeah, okay, let's bring it on. It's, you know, it was a very, very shocking card. Uh, I just have to get your thoughts. I don't know if you saw that main event uh what did you think of of christian lee against oak you, you know a lot of people think christian won that fight do you have an opinion on that uh, for me if you go to the one championship rules the, the the fight is very close you know but for me i have christian lee edging out for this one uh via split decision so i think uh for me christian lee won the fight and like you said you have been gone for 20 months must have been so good to be back after one year and eight months uh you want to get back in there sooner uh how long do you want to wait and it depends you know to one championship for me my job is to stay ready my job is to level up every day and when one championship calls i'll be ready our next question goes to nisi ikasiano of iv times uh you've been out for 20 months and this fight got rescheduled once or twice, and you also you got injured. You also contracted COVID. How fulfilling is it to get this victory? And plus, plus also the factor that you didn't get an opponent who is a tune-up opponent for this fight. Um, for me, it's very, very satisfying. You know, to uh, there's a lot of challenges last year pandemic lockdowns i got injured and earlier this year i got this covid 19 like uh, i was locked down for four to five weeks very hard and recovering from that sickness very hard you know just i just thank god for everything for his blessings and i'm here 100 percent healthy and yeah we're going to move on to the next question. This one will be from Leon Jennings of Asian Persuasion MMA. Obviously, Team Lakai has been one of the best gyms in the world for a long time, but now we've got there's a lot of young blood and you're kind of leading that charge. How exciting is it to see the young guns coming through Team Lakai? Oh, I'm very, very excited, man. You, know, uh, you just watch me. And if you watch them and they're more stronger they are more powerful they're more faster than me if you expect that you know to the next generation of uh, team lakai fighters so yeah I'm, I'm very very excited for them one of you guys lito obviously had a good win tonight um he also took quite a few low blows Just wondering um how's he doing now it's good it's taking a rest but i think he's hurt <laughs> i can't walk properly because ah uh, that was like I think four to five times groin yeah. shot. Man, that hurts. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's, yeah, his resting is uh, is good now, and 
Well, my last question was, was, was going to be how, how the two of you are going to celebrate, but maybe Lito might, might not be able to celebrate with you if he's um, struggling a little bit. It's hard to celebrate right now because of this, of our situation, but no, we can't, uh, we can't wait to go home with the who get back to our families and celebrate with them. Denison Dalupang of Inquirer. Um, from that young kid in Myanmar back in 2016, um, you're very shy and now you're very assertive. Um, a lot of growing up has happened to you. But um, what would you say yung, the biggest part of you that has grown um, in this journey of you being a champion? Um, there's a lot, you know, uh, in confidence, in attitude, in um, in my skills, there's there's a lot. But you know, I'm still 25 years old. I have a long way to go, and I will just keep getting better and better every single day. That's my goal to level up at least one percent every day. And I think uh, I have more to show this uh, in this coming, uh, you know, in the future in my future fights. And um, you mentioned earlier that um, if possible, um, another shot um, against Naito, the very first guy you um, challenged um, in your one career. So what can you say about um, that possibility? It's good, you know, because this, these guys are in here in the division long time and they're fighting and he is the number two contender in my uh my division so he deserve it and if not you know maybe naito and bokong will fight and whoever wins gets the title shot our next question will go to jack gotso of tops of sports uh now trilogy fights they they affect your legacy uh you got one tonight you're, you're hoping to get another one back and possibly your next fight. You're only 25 years old. Uh, what do you think about your legacy and how you're building it? And, and do you hope to become maybe even the Manny Pacquiao of uh, MMA? Oh, that would be great. Yeah. You know, no, I, I would just want to prove that, you know, a lot of um, people saying that uh, trilogy fights is a curse to Team Lakai. So I don't believe that. You know, uh, I broke that saying tonight, and I want to do it again, uh, if possible, a trilogy with Naito. And uh, everyone's talking about possibly moving, you know, some cards to the U.S. Or, or Europe and other places. But what would it mean to you to possibly defend your belt in the Philippines? Oh, wow, well, that would be great. Uh, I miss, you know, I miss uh, fighting in front of my uh um, Kababayans in my hometown and um, hopefully the situation will be uh, good and hopefully one championship will get back to the Philippines and I could defend my title there. This next question comes from James, Stephen James Irvine of MMA Radio. I just want to ask, so you're now two to one against Saruta. Now you both got title wins over each other and you've both become a big part in each other's history. So how does it feel now to possibly close that chapter on your journey once and for all? Because it isn't very likely that you're going to be fighting again. So how do you feel looking back on that? Oh, it's very, very satisfying. Very, I'm very, very happy you know, for the result to get the big win and to close the chapter between me and Saruta. But we never know. When we close, uh, uh, cross paths again in the future. So, yeah, it's just amazing. Our next question will go to Ivan Stewart of Dugout Philippines. Uh, first off, uh, during that fight with uh, uh, Saruta, when did you, uh, let's see, when have you, when was that moment where you felt that it's that, it's that perfect? opportunity for this for the rampage oh when the for when i caught that you know uh leg kick and i caught him in a right straight or overhand so, uh, i felt that 
my two knuckles, you know, landed in his chin. So I followed up, followed it up, and um, yeah, that's the time I failed and I got the finish. For your possible next fight, po, uh, coming up from this from this trilogy, uh, what can we expect, po, that we can see more from you uh, in the in upcoming fights? I'll expect that you know. Uh, still a more improved Joshua Pasho, you know. Um, I feel that I, I, have a, I have a lot more to offer and uh, you will see that in my future fights. This next one is from Kevin Estrada of Bern Sports Philippines. Josh, you said last week about this will be at par with Rene and Alex as Toughest title defenses, and now you have hurdled it. It had, it had been so quick. It had been, it, we were surprised that it was so quick. It's just, it's just the, the game plan worked to your perfection. You felt, you put, you put him into a trap wherein he cannot escape. We did not see his takedowns in the entire match. How do you took? How do you take? How do you took his ground game away? Like for us, you know that that is hard work. You know, Coach Mark said to me, "You have uh, more tools than him." You know, I I got to strike, and I can wrestle now, not just defense but offense. So if I go to standing. I want to go to the standing. Then we'll do it. Just uh, try to take me down, and I will. I will wrestle with you. So um, I have answers in all his attacks, and uh, it happens that he fight with me with my bread and butter, the striking, and yeah, get the win. And you see, you and you see, you fought so confident that you even. You even said that you you had to put up a chunk of your build up in recovering, and that is a scary thought. What more if Joshua Pasha didn't have that COVID? How dangerous was he on that night? Um, things happen. You know, um, this I think for me, this COVID made me tough tougher than ever and uh, it was hard like four to five weeks and uh, but you know we survived we we're, we we are a fighter not just in a circle but in real life so you know i am tough and um i have a i have a world champion mindset in me so that's why i'm a world champion now